Thank you for joining us this afternoon and uh, wherever you are in the world, it may well be morning. Um, so uh, uh, again, we have a brilliant uh, uh, presentation for you today with the Global Tech Webinar Series uh, that's brought to you by Austrade. We're very, very uh, delighted by the fact that we're able to present South Korea today, one of the uh, top uh, uh, most innovative countries in the world, according to Bloomberg. And uh, you're going to hear some uh, great speakers today. So uh, so thank you uh, uh, to all of our speakers and to uh, David and the Austrade team for uh, putting this together. Uh, I'd like to uh, begin by um, uh, paying my respects uh, we acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and recognise their continued connection to land, waters and culture. And I pay my respects to uh, their elders, past, present and emerging as well. Um, some housekeeping. So today you'll have your speakers on the screen. There's uh, uh, for a, a best experience, you can go, go to the right button at the top the button at the top uh, right there, which layout and you can uh, decide how you want to uh, have your uh, screen look in terms of the presentation slides and the speakers. Uh, everyone uh, uh, who is a participant uh, is on mute, so please pose your questions to uh, the speakers in the panel through the Q&A uh, section, and uh, our facilitator will then pick up your questions and ask those of the speaker as well. Um, we are recording the session so that uh, you can follow up uh, if in case you've missed anything or you want uh, to see those slides again. Um, there will be some Slido questions, so uh, you can see the Slido.com there and please use the code hashtag global tech as well. Uh, without uh, further ado, I'm going to hand over to David Camalengo and uh, he'll take you through what uh, what's in store for today and the speakers. So David, over to you. Thanks very much, Ron. Hi, everybody. Um, and I, look, I would too would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands in which we're meeting today. For here, for me here in Brisbane, that is the Tutabul and Yagara people, and pay my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. Uh, and this week being NADOC week, I'd also like to acknowledge and pay my respects to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander colleagues that are on the call today. Um, thank you, Ron, for the introduction. Just, I just want to provide maybe a little bit of context. We. Um, are very proud to be partnering with AAA on this series, this webinar series, which is really around uh, shining a light or a spotlight on various countries across the globe and what's happening in those markets and their, uh, particularly with regards to their technology and innovation ecosystems. We're very excited to be able to present today's session on South Korea. And as Ron mentioned, um, I think we're all aware of how incredibly innovative South Korea uh, continues to be and ranking at the very top of, of world rankings. Um, and so with that, I'm uh, going to you know, get right into it and hand over to Austrade's Senior Trade and Investment Commissioner based in South Korea, Julie Quinn, to um, kick things off. Julie, over to you. Hi, and th thank you, David, and thank you, Ron, and hello, audience. Uh, or should I say, one of my few words of Korean. Uh, thank you very much to the Australian Information Industry Association and David's um, Austrade Centre of Excellence for supporting this global tech webinar with a focus on South Korea, my favourite topic, tech in South Korea. Uh, as David said, I'm speaking to you from Seoul, where Austrade has an office in the uh, Australian Embassy, and we have a number of staff here uh, who are pleased to work with uh, Australian and Korean businesses who are looking to partner uh, in a number of fields, not just tech. To our Australian attendees, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we've lined up some fantastic speakers who will provide an overview of the South Korea tech market and provide reasons why Korea should be on your radar for your growth strategy in Asia. A little bit about the relationship between Australia and Korea. We are strong trading and investment partners and our economies are highly complementary. Korea's economy is the 10th largest in the world and Australia's is 13th. Korea is Australia's fourth largest trading partner. Australia's secure supplies of resources and energy have fueled Korea's industrialization, and these are essential components for Korea's exports of steel, automobiles, and ships. Our high quality agricultural products complement Korea's own food production. And I'm very pleased to see lots of Australian wine on the shelves here in Korea. We see countless opportunities for future collaboration. For example, 
our critical minerals are vital inputs to Korea's high tech manufacturing industries, most notably the EV battery industry. Together, we can tackle the green technologies that will help us to, we can develop the green technologies that will help us tackle climate change, transform our economies and create new jobs. Stronger teamwork between Australian and Korean researchers will take us to the forefront of fields such as biotech, AI, quantum computing and robotics. When it comes to scale-ups and technologies, South Korea has nurtured more than 98,000 startup companies and many multi-billion dollar unicorns, including Kakao and Kupang, two programs I use all the time, and Timon. The local government here continues to invest generous funding to support a thriving innovative ecosystem to both local and international scale-ups. In this session, uh, you will gain insights on how government organisations such as the Seoul Business Agency support foreign companies to thrive in the South Korean market, how to take advantage of the latest government grants for tech SMEs and startups, and gain support from Korea Institute of Startup Entrepreneurship Development, or KISED, at the Pangyo Techno Valley, also known as the Silicon Valley of Korea how to navigate the R&D innovation landscape and learn how foreign companies commercialise their technologies in Korea, as well as to understand the opportunities provided by the Hyundai Motor Cradle Innovation Program. And you can see that outlined on our agenda today with our speakers' names. So um, on that note, I would like to introduce you to our first speaker, Hong Sok Cho Che, Manager of the Strategy Marketing Team Invest Seoul of the Seoul Business Agency. He will share Korean tech market statistics as well as business opportunities provided to international companies to rediscover Seoul, South Korea. Thank you very much. David and Julie. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Hong Sok of a um, manager of uh, Invest Seoul. And it is so nice to meet you here through today's webinar. Today, I will introduce you to Seoul's business environment and services what Invest Seoul provides for international investors. According to Bloomberg Innovation Index, Korea has been named the most innovative country in the world for eight consecutive years. And based on the European Innovation Scoreboard, Korea is the most innovative country than most of advanced countries in the world. The city of Seoul won the Urban Award at Smart City Expo World Congress in Barcelona. Also, Seoul is well known as the best e-government for many years. More than 99% of the population access the internet at home, and 95% of the population has a smartphone. This is much higher than the other countries, and all ages are very used to social media. Korea is famous for high education and talented people. About 70% of the population has a college degree or more, and more than 35 of R&D personnel has a master's degree or higher. Korea is the highest R&D investment country in the world compared to GDP. We have 11 unicorns in Korea so far, and 9 out of 11, 11 are located in the city of Seoul. Seoul has various industry clusters to boost industries and companies from media to bio, uh, DMC, the media and digital cluster, and MAGO, high tech and R&D cluster. 
G belly, the IoT cluster, Hongneung, the bio cluster, Yangjie, AI and big data cluster. That's for what Korea and the city of Seoul looks like. And now I will tell you about what Invest Seoul and Seoul Metropolitan Government are doing for foreign investors. Yeah, Invest Seoul was launched in this year by Seoul Metropolitan Government to, to make Seoul a more attractive global business city with abundant investment opportunity. Here are some of uh, the core services InvestSoul provides you. We arrange visits to Seoul representative with uh, business clusters, such as uh, Mago, Yangjae, and Yeido. So you can witness the potential of Seoul in person as a global financial hub. You will be provided with practical information on investment in the relevant areas, including accounting, labor, and intellectual property rights in English. We have a program called All-in-One Package, which can be more practical support for investment execution. Service expenses for incorporation, capital increase, and consulting on labor and accounting will be covered under this package. Office rent, relocation fees are also subsidized. Our one-on-one -on -one business matching program helps foreign direct invested enterprise companies to find key local partners and interact in the local business community. And for foreign invested businesses that have a positive impact on the economy, the city of Seoul also provides various benefits and incentives, including cash grant, cash grant, and tax exemption. So you can find us for more detailed information later on after this webinar is over. If you'd like to know more about Invest Seoul and Seoul, yeah, feel free to contact me anytime with those contacts. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Choi, for joining us today and for your presentation to understand the Korean tech market and also ABS support to international companies. I would like now like to introduce you to our next speaker, uh, Ms. Jae Eun Jo. She is a senior manager of the Korean Institute of Startups and Entrepreneurship Development named KIST. And KIST is a leading institution in the Korean startup ecosystem. They are under the Ministry of SMEs and Startups. So, to you, Mrs. Joy. Thank you, Ms. Yoon. And hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jeon Jo, a senior manager of KISSED. It's my great pleasure to be all here for a global tech webinar. And I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce Korea Institute of Startup and Entrepreneurship Development, KISSED. As a leading institution, in Korean startup ecosystem. KISSED has been sparing no effort in fulfilling the roles and responsibilities under the Ministry of SMEs and Startups. Uh, can we share my slide to ev with everyone? You have presentation rights if you can upload your slides. Uh, hello, Marnie, are you there? Ron, can you provide access to me, please? Thanks. Um, yes, as a leading institution in Korean startup ecosystem, KISED has been sparing no effort in fulfilling the roles and responsibilities under the Ministry of SMEs and Startups. KISED was established in 2008 and designated as a public institution with consigned executive authority in, in 2019. KISED aims at raising awareness on entrepreneurship, facilitating tech-based startups, 
and contributing to the development of national economy. Our next slide, please. Strong, strong interest in the startup sector has increased the number of applicants to KISET startup programs in the last decades, and KISET has also grown in size. Number speaks for itself. We've identified and nurtured more than 40,000 startups by the year of 2021, while our annual budget for 2022 reaches 1 billion US dollars. We have four bureaus, 20 departments, and more than 200 employees now. Next slide, please. Uh, and Marnie, would you press to enter? Part, enter? Ah, yes. Okay, now let me introduce you what KISID does. As you may know, the definition of startup varies depending on the country. In Korea, a startup means a company with seven years or less of experience. So we provide startups with, compre with comprehensive services from infrastructure education, commercialization, marketing, event, competition, research and analysis to global expansion. Next slide, please. So first, we provide infrastructure and education to foster a conducive startup ecosystem and culture. Centers for creative economy and innovation and startup parks are the venues where anyone can turn their creative ideas into business. Youth Bisco and mentorship platforms raise awareness on entrepreneurship and empower the participants to become authentic entrepreneurs. Next, please. Second, for commercialization, we provide customized support by development stage in the pre, early, and scale up. Free startup package provides fund, education, and mentorship to facilitate commercialization of pre stage startups. Early stage package supports Korean startups with three years or less of experience in prototyping, fundraising, and their scale up. Scale up package provides support for exports, distribution, product improvement to help startups with three to seven years of experience to overcome the so called debt belly. Next, please. And for bigger sustainability, we come through solutions for startups market expansion and positioning. And events like Come Up and AI Championship are serving as a forum for information exchange and networking among the players in the startup ecosystem. Next slide, please. Moreover, to systematically promote and foster startups, we put a lot of efforts in research and analysis that include policy development and supportive schemes. And we can move on not mentioning global expansion of Korean startups. And I hope this information will be very helpful for you to expand your target market in Korea. The Department of Global Startups where I'm working for is committed to global startup programs. So let me briefly introduce the programs. We have six programs. And the first one is KSC, Korea Startup Center. It is a platform for global expansion of Korean startups. There are seven centers around the world, the US, Sweden, Finland, India, Israel, Singapore, and France. The platform leverages networks of accelerators in the local market, providing working spaces, consulting services, and 60 million won of fund. For global market expansion of Korean startups, uh, this program utilizes local accelerators to provide local market research and support for business model pivoting and 30 million won for commercialization. This year's target countries are the United States, United Kingdom, Germany, Vietnam, and Singapore. Next slide, please. And Global Startup Academy. In this program, big companies like Google and Microsoft, they provide tailored education while top tier accelerators such as Techstars and 500 Global offer incubation services to help Korean startups go global. And the 
The next one is overall assistance for startup immigration system and inbound program. OASIS aims at attracting excellent non-Korean entrepreneur, non -Korean entrepreneurs to Korea. So this provides comprehensive support for their startup visa acquisition, which is D84. Inbound program is to encourage non-Korean startups to do business in Korea. It provides working spaces, opportunities for proof of concept and open innovation. Next, please. And K-Ground. K-Ground is an opportunity to experience Korean startup ecosystem and cooperate with Korean startups and big companies. This year, K-Ground will be held in conjunction with Up global startup event in Korea. So it'll be hosted from November 9th to 11th in Seoul, Korea. So overseas startups will be matched to Korean large companies like Kakao or Naver or Samsung, while overseas large companies like uh, Macri will be matched to Korean startups. So they can cooperate together and have some opportunities to get developed. And the last one is international cooperation. We understand that around the globe, startups are creating large number of decent jobs and strength, strengthening national capacity. So KSET establishes strategic partnership with more than 30 countries for stronger startups and more enabling startup ecosystem. For example, last year, one of the athletes was uh, hosting a festival, startup festival with ASEAN countries. So we are looking forward to cooperating with more countries. Well, thank you. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chun, for, for your introduction on the scale-ups and how our international scale-up could come to Korea and receive some of the support from KIST. Now, we'd like to introduce you to Mr. Uh, Dr. Bon Hong Kim. He's the founder and chief of the Hanyang University Global Cluster Center. And the Hanyang Global Innovation Cluster Center uh, promotes international collaboration between researchers and industry sectors by bringing them to build constructive partnerships. So, uh, thank you, Mr. Dr. Kim. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. So let me share the my slide. Let me see. Okay. Okay, can you see my slide? Okay. Okay, thank you so much for inviting me to share the, my, uh, our information uh, between Korea and Australia. So uh, today I uh, would like to introduce an overview of Korean R&D opportunities for international uh, tech companies. I'm uh, director of Hanyang University Erika Global Innovation Class Center. So let me just explain that. Okay, just hold on, please. Your slides are up. Yeah, yes. Let me check the okay. okay. I cannot uh, page down, page up. Oh, okay, here. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so let me introduce first uh, our Global Innovation Cluster Center. Uh, our Global Innovation Center mission is uh, to force the international collaboration in science and innovation for global impact. And our goal is uh, to expand our network and discover academic and industrial partners globally. That is our uh, mission and goal. So basically, we are focusing on the global partners and Korean local partners. Uh, let me introduce the uh, industry university corporation, our Erika campus. Erika campus is Korea number one industry university corporation. We have the ICC operations, uh, which is a cooperative cooperation center hosted by uh, a lot of Korean 
government program and also we are working on the activation of the startup systems so there there are a lot of uh, industry university cooperation in the our camp inside our campus and then the other campus uh, this is our uh, strategic location you can see that the, there is the around 20000 uh, SMEs and uh, large companies, which are the Banul China Industrial Complex, and the near the we have a Hyundai Motors and also SK Hynix, and there are a couple of uh, large companies in near the, our campus. Uh, our center have been networking with the other uh, uh, researchers and the other associations in the, all over the world. So you can see that the Spain, USA, and Thailand, and Ukraine, and Austria. Also, in 2019, I have a, I visited the Australia. We were talk, talking with the electronic vehicle uh, industry. That is our, we have an achievement. Let me introduce the, uh, briefly around the, the Korean R&D. You can see that the Korean government have invested a huge amount of the R&D to the uh, corporations. You can see the uh, largest R&D spend in the world, around 20 billion US dollars per year. And the Korean government R&D investment per GDP is number one in the world. It's around 1.09%. And uh, you can see the, uh, according to ministry, so it's the Ministry of Science and ICT uh, have got the, the funding around $7.3 billion, and the Ministry of Trade, Industry, and Energy have gotten the $4.3 billion from the government funding. So this is a kind of overview of Korean R&D funding. Uh, this is a kind of uh, the uh, sectors. So right now, Korean government uh, have uh, focused on the overcoming uh, crisis, which is infection disease and public safety. And there is uh, another innovative growth and uh, future technology. And also, Korean government uh, have uh, invested the R and D for SMEs. So you can see that the, from 2021 to 2022. Korean government have invested uh, uh, directly gro grossly and then they have invested more. So you can see the, the numbers. So, so Korean government have the kind given the kind of opportunity for the uh, overseas companies can participate in the R&D project after establishment of a Korean cooperation. That means the foreign investment company can join the Korean government R&D funding. So this is the first step is you must uh, uh, registration of foreign investment company and then you can participate in R&D task. This is a kind of a brief of the uh, uh, incorporation procedure. So if you, after you are the foreign investor company in Korea, and then you can follow the, the incorporation procedure, like, uh, you know, there is the kind of a seven step, but it's, it's, it's not short time, but it's, the, it's not take long. You can register the, as a Korean uh, foreign investor companies. So let me introduce the one example right now. So it's a, this is the uh, Korea Autonomous Driving Development Innovation Project, a uh, seven-year project from 2021 to 2027. Total amount is around 1 billion US dollars. Uh, there are, you can see the new vehicle conversion technology. There are 25 projects around 230 million dollars. So you can see that there are uh, a lot of uh, projects are ongoing there. So this is the kind of the structure of the uh, Korean government R&D funding. So this is the R&D assignment number, number 16, R&D task of land transportation science and technology. So R&D project name is the development of safe evaluation technology for driving and collision situations. This is the around, the, you can see it's the 15 million US dollars for seven years. 
there is the, uh, some uh, small and medium companies have uh, joined this R&D project. For example, amended the solution, this is a small and medium company. They got the around 2.2 million US dollars, A2G Autonomous got the $1.8 million. And also a uh, German-based company, this is a foreign investment company, the TUB South Korea, they have joined the number six and number 17 Korean government funding R&D. So they got the around the uh, 3.7 uh, million US dollars. So our center uh, have uh, joined uh, some of the Korean government uh, uh, project. You can see that now we are dealing with uh, five project and then last year and from uh, 2019 to 2022. Okay. Uh, finally, I want to introduce the uh, potential cooperation model. Uh, we are uh, providing incubation for the foreign companies and also B2B matchmaking and also we are providing advertising. We, I, uh, only I showed the, our, near the, our campus, we have the, around 20,000 uh, companies in, near the, our campus. So we have a lot of networking, so we will give the, that kind of the service. So uh, if you uh, submit an application to Hanyang Erika Global Innovation Center, we, uh, we will select the uh, based by committee, and then we will give the result of a notification, and then we can start a uh, total care solution. There is the uh, three-step kind of the strategy solution of the OK, thank you so much. The, if you have uh, more detailed uh, questions, so let me uh, please contact with me. Thank you. I think we may have lost Sanger. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kim. Uh, so, sorry, I mean, now. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kim, for the insightful information about the Korean R&D market and the possible partnership opportunities between global and local companies through Erica. And last but not least, I would like to introduce our last speaker is Gillian Parvey. He is the manager of Zero One Team, the innovation division of Hyundai Motor Group. And Hyundai Cradle is Hyundai Motor Group's corporate venturing an open innovation business which partners and invests extensively in global startups to accelerate the development of advanced future automotive technologies such as AI mobility and autonomous driving. So to you, Parve, thank you. Thank you. Um, hi everyone. I hope you can you can see my screen. Hopefully I don't get kicked out of that meeting room. I've been kicked out of three meeting rooms already. So hopefully this one is the good one. Um, so as uh, Sangha mentioned, I'm, I'm a manager in, in Hyundai Motor Group um, in a division called Innovation Division. I will, uh, I will explain a little bit more about um, the overall background of our team and our division. Uh, I think I can share those slides after. So um, I will pass quickly on some and, and spend more time on, on, on a couple of others. So if you, if you need more info, just let me know at the end and I will, I will send you uh, these slides over. Um, Quite broad to, to start just on this slide. Uh, you know, the automotive industry has been a quiet and slow industry for a long, long time. And over the last 10, 20 years, you know, we, we've seen a lot of changes. This forced the, the automakers, traditional automakers, to actually uh, uh, work in, in a little bit more of an innovative way. And, and you in the motor group uh, is, is no different. From the gradual changes that you see on the left, we had to um, we had to cope with more innovative changes, what we call MECA in, in this industry. So M for mobility and smart mobility, E electrification, C connectivity and, and A autonomous. So all of these new technology that uh, arrived and that forced the traditional OEM to, to be more innovative, pushed, pushed us to, um, 
to look a little bit more outside of what's going on um, in uh, in ICT industries and in, in other sectors. So um, push traditional uh, corporates from being just car manufacturer and just sell cars to, as you can see at the bottom, smart mobility solution provider. Um, this happened to uh, to Hyundai Motor Group as well. So Hyundai Motor Group obviously is Hyundai, Kia, Genesis. Um, and beyond just the, the automotive sectors, we we had to look at others, including those that you see on, on that slide. So obviously a lot of electrification um, and smart factory type of thing, a lot of AI for autonomous driving, but also robotics, smart logistics, smart cities, and, and um, hydrogen robotics. Um, robotics included here because Hyundai Motor Group um, now owns Boston Dynamics, the, the dancing robot spot. Um, so it's also became kind of a pretty important sector for us. So as you can see, well beyond just creating cars and selling cars, we're also looking at a variety of, of sectors. So to, to kind of put that into, you know, to, to allow the company to do these um, type of research in these sectors properly, uh, the, the company created a division called Innovation Division. A few years ago, it was called uh, called the Strategy and Technology Division. Um, if um, for 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 those of you that that knew that division before, it's now called Innovation. Um, the way we work, we have four different groups, and our role is really to bring external innovation back to uh, to the group. So based on the internal needs and based on the the overall long-term strategy of the company, these four groups will actually go look outside of the company in Korea and globally to try to grab innovation. So that can be done through um, more research-based type of work, so with innovative technology group, uh, more strategy, strategic foresight, as you can see on the top left, uh, new businesses. So it's usually a new business initiative that we are running with, with bigger partners, the like of, I don't know, uh, Uber or, or the like of other OEMs as well. And then the fourth part, the part that you have at the bottom uh, right, is more on the open innovation and the strategic investment. So this is my part. Um, if we deep dive into, into this part, the way we, we do it, we co cover all, uh, all type of investment from company building to seed to M&As and, and JVs uh, through balance sheet investment, but also through our own fund. Uh, my team is called Zero One Team. We have our own fund uh, dedicated to early stage um, deals only and only in Korea for now, but soon opening globally. So if there are uh, Australian startups in the audience, uh, we can definitely talk. Uh, this this fund is only 80 million so far. We're working on, on a third fund uh, coming potentially next year that should be a lot larger than this, potentially 250 million uh, USD. Um, so as you can see, we're covering all the investment from our team, which is the early stage investment team and, uh, and the CDC team working on series A, series C, and then we will pass on to the Corp Dev uh, team that would work on the larger deals and everything M&A and, and JV related. Uh, if we continue uh, with, with a quick deep dive on our team, um, yeah, th this one is just to tell you that we we engage with quite a lot of companies. We have an active portfolio of around 200 companies so far, and we've been investing since 2017. Um, if we do a deep dive on, on our company, Zero One, the best way to, to think about it beyond just the early stage investment is to see it as a creative talent platform. So what it means is beyond early stage investment, we will also work with uh, what we call creators. So that's the zero one playground part, meaning we will work with designers, architects, uh, painters, any type of more creative people uh, to try to challenge some of the assumptions that we have in the automotive industry. So with these people, we will work on on really um, uh, different, but but extremely interesting project on, on smart city, on uh, renewable energies, on uh on renewable materials and and things like that um we also have something that we call startup ventures and uh, zero one ventures sorry and and this is more 
the part on on open innovation and uh, open innovation for us goes a little bit beyond simply investing in companies it also means partnering with them uh do pocs so proof of concept and and collaborating with them on entire projects and and not only uh, investing so comparing to the slide i shared uh, just uh, earlier when i i only showed the the investment and some of the teams working on investment but our team goes beyond that and and works also on the actual technology project, the partnership project, and everything linked to open innovation within the group. Um, this slide we can pass. Maybe this one can, can give you a little bit of a better idea of, of what I just mentioned. We, we will have that investment function uh, that you can see on, on the right. Um, but we also do co-building, meaning we help uh, talented in video create the company from within Hyundai, but also uh, outside. We have an accelerator program that um, I think might be interesting for some of the, the people uh, watching us in, in Australia. So I will, I will have a couple more slides on this. Um, we have the, the Zero One Playground that I mentioned. We have a dedicated space in, in Gangnam, a kind of a maker space uh, type of place where people can actually go there and create their project, um, their, their hardware project. Uh, we also have other uh, other activities and and and, and uh, open innovation related activities as you can see on the top. We have OI Lounge. It's a program that we run with the product division here, so more automotive product related type of project. Uh, open innovation training, which is an internal open innovation program that we have to help uh, our employees understand a little bit more about why we need to innovate and how we can do it. It's specifically with startups. Uh, we have a think tank um, a capacity as well, and, and a bunch of other, uh, a bunch of other um, uh, programs that um, I would be happy to, to, uh, to talk about a little bit more uh, if we have more time. So all of these activities, they're, they're done from HQ. Uh, it's, a, it's a traditional company after all in Korea, so it's very top down. We do everything in HQ, but we obviously have a global presence. Um, we have open innovation and investment offices that we call cradles uh, that are under the responsibility of our team, the Zero One team. Uh, so far, we've, we've, uh, we have five cradles, as you can see. The first one was open in Silicon Valley uh, a bit more than 10 years ago. And then we opened three in a row in Tel Aviv, Berlin, Beijing. And last year, we opened uh, Singapore. Singapore is, um, there is no slide on that, but Singapore is, is quite interesting because it's also where we are building a smart factory, the first smart factory of, of in the motor group. It would be a small factory uh, producing around 20,000 vehicles a year, so not very big, but it will be kind of a test bed for um, what should be the, the, the factories of the future for an automotive OEM, so, so more flexible, more sustainable, and able to adapt to different vehicles, et cetera, et cetera. So um, not too far from, from Australia. I think there are quite interesting stuff happening in, in Singapore. And uh, again, you know, with more time, I could, uh, I could dwell into that a little bit more. Um, the, the last two slides, uh, and I hope you're, you're, you're still with me uh, because I think I'm going very fast. Um, the last two slides I thought were that, that could be interesting for the audience are on the zero one ventures part and specifically on the accelerator program that we are running. Um, not very original, we call it zero one accelerator. Uh, what zero one is, is it's our team going um, in the group. Um, we created a committee that we call open innovation committee. It's, it's with, uh, as you can see around a bit more than 100 internal business unit in R&D. So business unit R&D teams and also some of the affiliates, as you can see, in the Mobis, Transis, Auto Ever, Globus. Um, we take their technical needs, some of the project that they're working on, and then based on their needs, we go then scout companies that would actually fit those needs. Once we have found those companies, we obviously interview and, and we, we select the best ones. And then for the ones that have been selected, they go through uh, the entire acceleration program uh, with us. 
what we do throughout that acceleration program, um, we, we create a scope of work that makes sense for us, makes sense for the internal business unit, makes sense for the startup. And then we work on a potential proof of concept with them. The, the proof of concept is paid by our team uh, up to $50,000 uh, and, and can run as long as, as needed. So sometimes it's a small proof of concept uh, that, will, that will be done in three weeks. Sometimes it takes a little bit more time and, and you need uh, and, and three weeks or three months. And sometimes it lasts a little bit longer and lasts six, nine, 12 months. Um, but basically it's, it's kind of a typical acceleration program, except that you will be working solely with Unimor Group internal business unit. And at the end, you will potentially be eligible for uh, investment if the POC has been successful. So um, I, I think I cut, the, I cut the slides here because I thought that could be relevant for um, uh, the audience. Uh, but again, happy to um, dwell into this a little bit more if you're interested. Just to let you know that we will be launching our, um, our accelerator, second accelerator for this year in a month. So if there are companies in Australia that are uh, interested in working with Unimotor Group in some of the themes that I explained, so automotive, mobility service, smart factory, robotics, et cetera, uh, we'd be happy to, to have a discussion and, and explain that program in, in a little bit more details uh, after that. So I think that's it. I think I use all my time. Uh, and in a nutshell, that's what we do. Thank you so much, Gillian, for your yep. detailed introduction of Zero One and Hyundai Cradle. We really hope that we can have some more Australian startups actually and scale ups on your upcoming Hyundai program. Yeah, on the second one this year. Um, and now I would like to pass to to David for more Q and A's from our audience today. Thank, yeah, thank you, Sanger. Thank you to all the speakers. Really incredible information that everyone's provided. I think uh, it's going to be quite a quite a value for for those in attendance. A couple of questions that have come through. Um, I guess one is probably just a more generic one. So I hope uh, happy to, if, if any of the speakers want to answer it, but I guess what might be some of the challenges that one can expect uh, for companies trying to do business between Korea and Australia in the short to medium term? Maybe, yeah, perhaps GM, if, if, if that's, you've got a bit yeah, of experience uh, working with startups internationally. Um, yeah, I th so it's a, it's a complicated question. I think we, we would need an hour webinar for it. Um, I, I think for us, so when the, the, the easiest example, when we do a POC and we get a global company um, uh, on board, I think one of the main challenges um, is to, to really have someone on the ground. Uh, I think communication, it, it sounds stupid, but communication, cultural differences and all that um, can, can really kill a project. So I would, for companies, let's say Australian company doing, doing a POC with Hyundai, it's despite everything we say about remote work, uh, you would need to have someone on the ground uh, daily to actually make sure the project runs smoothly, to have um, direct communication channels with, um, with the internal teams and, and things like that. So um, Korea, similarly to some other countries in, in the region, it's quite a hard market to enter. I think it's very valuable once you're there, but to enter it, it's quite complicated. So um, I, I would I would uh, I would take a very serious approach and and really think, especially again for for more the point of view of a startup, um, not a larger company, but to really think twice uh, if you are ready to enter that market. It uh, it can be beneficial, but you you have to understand it's going to be complicated to um, to pierce it. So um, that, yeah, that that's... that would be the, the the main point for me. Yeah, hugely helpful. Is there anyone else who wanted to add anything to that? Dr. Kim, anything yourself wanted to add to that question? Actually, uh, what is the most difficult, I think, is the, the Korean regulation is very complicated, actually. So sometimes it it's very difficult to understand what kind of regulation because uh, uh, according to many uh, variety of the ministry, so they have a different regulation. So I think uh, uh, you need to understand and you need to analyze the, what is the Korean government regulation for the investor. So that's the also important things. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kim. Uh, there was another question regarding 
I guess, the perception of Australian startups. Uh, maybe I'll link these two questions, I guess, but perhaps what, what might be the areas in terms of subsectors or verticals where, you know, perhaps Australian startups might have an opportunity um, or any views around how Australian companies, uh, technology companies are perceived in Korea? Anyone want yeah, to? For, for us, maybe on um, everything energy related and particularly in the hydrogen sector, I think Australia is, is quite interesting and um, not, not in terms of EVs and EV uh, sales, because I know Australia is kind of a complicated market for this, but uh, in terms of the actual energy and energy production. And again, for us at Hyundai, since we look a lot at hydrogen, it's uh, it's quite interesting uh, what, what's uh, what's going on over there. Uh, a, be, beyond that, I don't think um, with Hyundai and maybe some of the, the the other panelists can add on that. But with Hyundai, we haven't had that much interaction with with Australian startups. I think that's why also that uh, that webinar today is a good occasion for us to introduce ourselves and tell them that they're more than welcome here. Um, mm -hmm. Oh yeah. All right. Is it okay that I tell Please. something? Yeah, yeah. If any business is new, the the market here is really trendy. Like for example, we work. Uh, they, yeah, they opened six sixteen branches within six years. Yeah, they did. They uh, actually, when we are started their business here. Uh, Korean think it is very new and very cool. So that's why they could increase uh, uh, their investment and open their branches so quickly. Yeah, 16, yeah, they, yeah, they went to 16 buildings within six years. And Netflix, yeah, they're the first OTT for sure. Even though there are some competitors here, actually it is really hard to, to have uh, the subscribers uh, like as uh, Netflix. So if any business is very new and trendy, yeah, you can start the business here. Okay, that's good feedback. Excellent, okay, great. So there's no limitations, it sounds like, as long as it is uh, something that's sort of groundbreaking. Excellent. Um, look, we have, probably have time for one last question. And uh, this, unfortunately, this hour has just disappeared. The, um, it's really just a question around uh, that came through that's that's talking about thank you for today's session it seems like korea has many incentives for foreign companies for foreign startups particularly um, they're, they're, and they seem to be managed by different institutions and groups um, is there one sort of primary point of contact for where and, and i'm going to probably answer that saying Austrade can support yes, that is Austria can support you <laughs> yeah saying it could probably um talk about that but maybe perhaps from our other speakers on on their views of what's a good way you know, to start, I guess, in terms of understanding the opportunity in Korea. Any, anybody want to take that one? A huge government, <laughs> the government. Yeah, uh, not like other countries, the startup ecosystem here is led by the government. So there are uncountable programs such as R&D, even I used to work for Seoul R&D Support Center. And uh, even, even Seoul has uncountable supporting program and the government and the ministries. Yes. NIPA, so many agencies. So if you're thinking of start any, starting any business here, yeah, whether it is just the person just startups or the business entrance of a foreign overseas corporations, you just need to have an office here, then you can use so many uh, different programs run by the government first. That, that's great advice. Thank you, Hong Seok. Excellent. Um, perfect. And saying maybe that's a good segue for you to wrap up and you can talk a little bit about yes. Austrade. Yes, so, so uh, I guess it's a little way to uh, let our audience know that Austria Seoul is located here. We have uh, 16 different uh, business development managers, uh, SB senior managers, TCs and STCs. We're all here supporting 
uh, Australian companies from different sectors. And as, as you've mentioned, probably the best way is to contact Austria Soul directly. We'll be able to talk to you and see the type of product company you are and advise you on the ways that we can uh, connect you and help you network with the different institutions and uh, government agencies, etc. that you've been introduced to today too, plus many others, if you're interested in the Korean market. And adding on to that, also, Osrisol is going to be working on different programs. So if you're looking into the Korean market, so market will be developing uh, some and, and being part of the AI conference in 2022 that's taking place in Seoul. We also have biomedical related events taking place supported by Austria Seoul called BioKorea 2023. Uh, another big one, H2 Mobility Energy Show 2022. We will be supporting any Australian companies that want to come into the Korean market on the energy side. We'll be able to support you. And also, as uh, it has mentioned, it has been mentioned today by the presenters, that's the case startup grand challenge program next rise and also with Hyundai cradle and the iron the opportunities ab sba will be able to connect you to them so you can have more in-depth talks and take a further kind of look at the korean market that's great thank you sanga um anything else from yourself sanga before i wrap up no, I think, uh, uh, well, if you, I think, feel free to contact Austria Soul and then, or maybe David and the AIIA for more information if you need the networks and the connections. Um, we will be more than happy to to give you further details on what we discussed today, including the PPTs and presentations. Excellent. Thank you, Sanger. Yes, please, please reach out to us. Um, uh, firstly, I'd just like to say a, a very big thank you to all of the panelists. Uh, thank you to Mr. Hong Shok Choi. Um, Ms. Shai Yun Cho, Mr. Uh, Dr. Bon Hoon Kim, uh, and Mr. Guillaume Pave for uh, some incredible presentations, uh, which I think will be very much be putting the use outside of this webinar as well. So thank you so much for your time. Um, and also thanks to Julie Quinn for our, our Senior Trade and Investment Commissioner uh, for Austrade based in Seoul. Uh, this is, I think this is the fourth of these sessions. I should remember actually the fourth of these sessions that we've hosted so far. The next session will be focusing in on the Philippines on the 9th of August. So please keep an eye out for that one. Um, again, I'd like to thank all of the speakers. I'd like to thank uh, all of the team uh, in the background helping to coordinate this, uh, including my team and the team there, Sanger and the team on the ground in Seoul. And also I'd like to thank um, AIIA for your continued support and partnership to help us get some of this great content and information out to audiences here in Australia. Ron, I will hand to you essentially to close. Uh, you've done it all, David. Uh, well done. So uh, uh, you've given uh, everyone else a lot of thank yous. I think uh, from me directly to you, thank you for uh, your support and uh, and for, uh, for managing today's event. Uh, the event has been recorded and will be up on our uh, YouTube uh, site uh, or directly through Austrade um, uh, from it should be tomorrow. All being well, and uh, and you've also heard from David about our next session with the Philippines. So look, thank you very much for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Uh, please uh, stay safe and well, and we'll see you again at another event soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.